Pam Gordon is an environmental consultant and founder of Technology Forecasters, Inc. She wrote the book Lean and Green, Profit for Your Workplace and the Environment, well before most of us realized by how much businesses can reduce their environmental footprints and save money in doing so. She has published more than 300 articles on lean, green, and other business strategies, including entrepreneurship, manufacturing outsourcing, and global supply chains. A graduate of San Jose State University, she has guest lectured at numerous universities and spoken at close to 200 conferences. Today, she'll shed light on the zero waste phenomenon, demonstrate how companies are achieving financial gain through approaching zero waste, and challenge us to discover value in what today our companies consider to be waste. Try getting through a single day these days without hearing one of the following terms. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Carbon neutral environmental footprint. Green buildings, renewable energy. Eco design or zero waste. All these terms have their specific meaning and thankfully there's a lot of crossover between them. But put together Inside a business, these waste reduction measures collectively are saving billions of dollars for companies each year. And beyond the cost savings measures, there are other financial gains such as competitive advantage and newfound sources of revenue, which we'll talk about in a moment. So let's today take zero waste. But before we get into some of the corporate examples, I'd like to bring the term home. In fact, I'd like to bring it to your home and to my home. The kids go out to the backyard and pick the ripe lemons. They're brought into the kitchen, cut in half, and squeezed. The empty lemon rinds dumped in a bucket that's later taken out to the backyard compost. Now, in the picture, you add in the filtered water, filtered at the tap, and you add the organic sugar, and you add the local honey, and you stir. Now you take the pitcher and a tower of tumblers out to the front of the yard and you set out your cardboard sign which says, lemonade. Believe me, it's no longer 10 cents a glass. What is it now? A dollar. A dollar? Anyone for a buck 50? A dollar. So it's been a profitable day, albeit hot. If there's any unsold lemonade by the end of the day, does it go to waste? Not a drop. <laughs> so you only need to know three terms to figure out if this is a zero waste manufacturing and distribution operation. They are input, product, and waste. So the input is labor. Yes, the kids worked hard. There's no doubt of that. The materials, the renewable materials are the lemons, right? And the filtered water, the local honey organic sugar. And are there any non-renewable materials that go in? Well, no, because the kids didn't use styrofoam cups that are made from petroleum, which is not renewable, and one use and thrown out. No, they use the kitchen tumblers, which last forever. OK, next one is the product. Well, what's the product in this case? Lemonade. Exactly, the lemonade, yeah. So now the waste part we have to put in quotes, because you see, one company's waste is actually feedstock for another operation. So case in point, the effluent waste in this case, effluent waste is water and food and sanitizing chemicals, smoke, gas. Well, it's the lemon rinds. They're already in the compost bin being turned, and they're going to be fertilizer for the trees and the rest of the plants in the yard. Now, the solid waste in this case is the cardboard sign. Now that's put in a corner for next week's lemonade sale, or it's dumped into the recycling bin. So there you have it. This is essentially a zero waste operation. And if you think about your products, why would you ever want to buy anything that doesn't end up in a product you can sell? Otherwise, it'd be such a waste. If your executives are still not convinced of how zero waste voluntarily creates an enormous cost savings and new revenue streams, then gently tell them that in a couple of years, their hands will be forced toward a zero waste program. 
You see 27 North American cities and 25 cities outside, including New Zealand, Australia, UK, South Africa, Korea, and others, have committed to zero waste by between 2010 and 2020. So you tell your executive that they're not going to be able to operate in more and more cities unless they have a zero waste program. Just as the cities are competing to be green, our organizations can compete too for a different kind of a green. The kind of green that makes them more profitable and finds them new sources of revenue. Thank you.